Rain drummed against the car window as Elon Musk stared out onto the endless grey stretch of the Long Island Expressway, nearly two decades before SpaceX would achieve a milestone that seemed like science fiction. Catching the super heavy booster mid-air with the precision controlled arms of a system called Mechantina, Musk was caught in a moment of frustration. On 13 October 2024, SpaceX would go on to capture an orbital class rocket booster mid-descent, catching it in place using the chopstick arm of a launch tower in Texas. Yet, on this dreary day in the early 2000s, Musk felt something different. Frustration over humanity's warning ambition to reach for the stars. How could we go to the moon? Musk wondered. And then, just stop. He couldn't shake the thought around him. The best minds of his generation poured their brilliance into tribal pursuits, crafting algorithms for ad clicks and apps for virtual pets. Musk dreamed of something more, a vision of Mars and igniting a new age of exploration. He wanted humanity to reach further, to not just look up at the stars, but to stand among them. With every cent he could muster, Musk would lease an empty factory in Al Cinguendo, California and gather a small crew of engineers. Their goal was audacious, to create a low-cost, reusable orbital rocket, a linchpin in Musk's vision for Mars. The thought that SpaceX might one day develop a system like Meganzilla, capable of catching rockets mid-air without landing legs, to streamline turnaround, seem impossibly distant. But Musk pushed his team to think bigger, to view every challenge as a stepping stone towards Mars. There is no speed limit, Musk told them that first day, his eyes blazing with intensity. Mars is waiting. SpaceX began with little more than a dream and Musk relentless drive. The factory floor was bare, a blank slate where engineers hurdled together working with whatever they could find. Musk's vision set an intense pace that defied aerospace norms. The mission was simple but brutal. If they couldn't make Falcon 1 fly, Musk's vision of Mars would just remain that, a vision lost to the stars. The early days were a feverish blur of invention, improvisation, and grit. I mean, the very early days, you know, I'd have meetings with NASA, and they'd be like, oh, yeah, whatever, it's internet guy, you know, you know, it's just, just some rich guy is gonna like lose all his money. And SpaceX factory bore little resemblance to the sterile environments of traditional aerospace companies. Engineers shared tools, jotted notes on whiteboards, and sketch designs on whatever paper they could find. Musk demanded faster solutions and fewer costs, pushing his team to rethink aerospace rules. For Musk, success was inevitable. It was only a matter of resilience and time. Why wait years? Musk would ask, dismissing the notion of a comfortable timeline. There is no time for perfect, we need orbit. Traditional aerospace manufacturing costs were staggering. NASA's bureaucratic processes relied on parts, costing thousands, sometimes millions. But the assumption that higher prices meant better reliability. But Musk questioned everything. He argued that if space was to be accessible for humanity's future, affordability and efficiency had to be built into every system. To push the team further, Musk introduced an idea almost unheard of in aerospace, using non-aerospace components if they met safety standards. The team started scoring parts from automotive or surplus manufacturing industries. Musk insisted if it works, it works. The engineers were tasked with scoring suppliers, inspecting every component they could afford to ensure it met aerospace standards. They knew each dollar spent on one component meant sacrifices elsewhere, so choices had to be wise. Testing was extensive and early prototypes were often crude, assembled quickly, and sometimes failing spectacularly. Yet each failure gave them insight, teaching them on how to improve. Quine Shotwell, hired to secure SpaceX's first contract, quickly learned that there were no limits at SpaceX, no traditional roles or hierarchy. A no-nonsense negotiator, she proved essential in sealing early deals, including a critical $278 million NASA contract that provided a lifeline for fledging company. Meanwhile, Tom Mueller, one of the few experienced rocket engineers on the team, was 
deep into developing the Merlin engine, the heart of Falcon 1. This engine needed to be affordable, efficient, and powerful enough to reach orbit, a feat that had eluded every privately funded aerospace company before SpaceX. SpaceX cost-cutting measures became legendary. They used $500 computers, where other companies relied on multi-dollar models, built test wrecks from spare parts, and streamlined designs to stay within Musk's aggressive budget. Mueller and the engineers faced technical roadblocks daily, including the intense cooling demands of the Merlin engine during sustained thrust. Solutions required unconventional fixes, and they worked often late into the night, making adjustments and retesting until each component met Musk's exacting standards. This is rocket science, Mueller reminded the team. It's complex, but it's not impossible. With each late night and breakthrough, a new feeling crept into the team, a feeling of unity, as if they were bounded together by more than just a mission. They weren't just building a rocket, they were building a dream. Engineers pulled long hours, hand welding parts, and running endless simulations and stress testing engines. Musk encouraged them to do everything in-house, bypass traditional suppliers wherever possible to maintain full control over costs and quality. Mars isn't waiting for us, Musk reminded them. This is our chance. The engineers shouldered in the demands with quiet intensity. Each felt the weight of SpaceX mission. For many, Musk energy was both exhausting and exhilarating. They believed in Musk's dream and for everyone involved, it felt like history in the making. A remote island of Kwajalein Atoll in the Pacific became SpaceX's proving ground. Set against a backdrop of palm trees and endless ocean, it was here that Falcon 1 would either rise to glory or fall to oblivion. The island's isolation presented enormous challenges. Any failure meant weeks of delays for repairs, and supplies had to be flown in from California on bulky C-17 military cargo planes. Must push forward undeterred. This was the only place SpaceX could affordably test Falcon 1 without interference from aerospace giants. The challenges were unprecedented. SpaceX, unlike traditional aerospace operation with near-limitless government resources, relied on ingenuity. If a machine part broke, they would fix it with what they had. If they ran out of materials, they would improvise. On Kwajalein, they built an entire launch infrastructure from scratch, even setting up living quarters since every essential supply had to be flown in. In March 2006, as the countdown to Falcon 1 first launch began, the control room asked with anticipation. Engineers hovered over consoles, rechecking telemetry, fuel levels, and throttle responses. Musk too was there. His face tense as he kept his gaze fixed on the screens. This was it, the culmination of years of relentless effort and sacrifice. At T-0, the Merlin engine roared to life and Falcon 1 ascended. It climbed steadily, cutting through the sky until disaster struck. The engine flickered and Falcon 1 began its swift, heartbreaking descent. Crashing onto the large pad with a thundering impact, the room fell silent, the devastation palpable. It was over in seconds. One engineer later recalled, years of work just gone. Musk quickly gathered the team, his voice steadily despite the crushing loss. Failures are lessons. He told them, if you're going to fail, we'll fail forward. With quiet resolve, the engineers returned to work, analyzing every byte of telemetry data from the launch. Every flicker on the screen, every vibration, every second of video feed was scrutinized. They rebuilt Falcon 1 with new insights, adjusting engine configurations and upgrading structural components. When the second launch of them came, they held their breath, hoping for a breakthrough. But once again, disaster struck. The rocket rose only to plummet back to Earth, leaving a deep crater where it landed. The team felt the sting of defeat, their morale shaken. Musk's resolve, however, did not waver. He stood among them, tired but undeterred. Again, he said, we'll fix it and go again. For the engineers, these failures were more than just setbacks. They were agonizing blows to their faith. But Musk's unyielding spirit became their anchor, and once more, they returned to the drawing board, this time building Falcon 1 from ground up rethinking every connection, every wire, and every bolt.
In these darkest moments, Musk's well hardened, known for his grueling interview process, Musk tested potential hires with strange, sometimes uncomfortable questions. He once asked an engineer if he dyed his hair simply to gauge the man's reaction. Musk's goal was to push each person to the limit to see if they had what it took. There are a ton of phonies in this industry, Musk told a colleague. We need people who are the real deal. Each new team member was vital. Musk personally interviewed each of the company's first 3,000 employees, often late into the night, to ensure they share his vision. When a highly skilled character candidate couldn't relocate due to his spouse's job, Musk didn't hesitate. He called Larry Page, co-founder of Google, and arranged for her transfer, ensuring SpaceX secured its talent. His determination extended far beyond recruiting. Musk fought for contracts, challenging established giants and even suing NASA for the right to build competitively. SpaceX wasn't here to follow protocol, they were here to break ground, and Musk would stop at nothing to see that happen. We're not here to play it safe. Musk said, we are here to rewrite the rules. Inside SpaceX, Musk's energy was electric. Engineers worked through exhaustion, the nights a blur of simulation, calculations and trial and error. Musk was chief engineer, finance director and a motivational force rolled into one. He scrutinized every detail, demanding that every part had to be streamlined, efficient and perfectly optimized. His mission mattered. Each failure was a step towards success. The day of the fourth launch arrived, Falcon 1 stood on the launch pad, gleaming under the tropical sun. The entire team knew this was it, their last chance. Another failure would mean the end of SpaceX. Musk, his fortune drained, had bet everything on this moment. If we don't make it this time, he told the team, we're finished. But we won't let that happen. In the control room, the tension was suffocating. Engineers monitored every cage, every signal waiting for the countdown to read zero. The fuel sloshing issue, which had doomed the previous launch, had been carefully addressed with adjustments and stabilizers. This time, Falcon 1 had to succeed. The countdown began, D-0. The engines ignited filling the air with a deafening roar. The ground shook as Falcon 1 lifted off, climbing steadily into the sky. Every sensor reading, every piece of telemetry was scrutinized. Engineers held their breath as a rocket passed every critical checkpoint. And then in a moment that felt like an eternity, the telemetry showed it. Falcon 1 had reached orbit. A stunned silence filled the room, followed by an explosion of cheers, tears and laughter. Musk, typically stoic, allowed himself a rare moment of celebration. He looked around the room, his voice filled with pride. We did it, he said quietly, eyes shining. This, this is just the beginning. As the celebration died down and the gorgely night stretched on, Musk sat alone, gazing up at the vast, unending sky. The stars seemed close now, at bright beacons calling out. Falcon 1's success wasn't just a victory for Musk or SpaceX, it was a triumph for humanity's desire to reach beyond itself. With the door to space pried open, Musk's mind raced toward on what lay ahead. Falcon 1's success marked the first step. Soon, there would be Falcon 9, then Dragon, and then one day, Mars itself. In the glow of that night on Gwajaline, humanity's dream of space exploration reignited a small but brilliant spark lighting the way to Mars.